There is a video that I tried to get attached to this post, but YouTube is kind of derpy with this one. But it shows very calming music while it shows a POV of a person washing their hands as they work in this small little diner truck. And they are just doing their happy little thing, you know, making, you know, delicious meals during the night time and just having a very beautiful time. It is, you know, a calm and happy time where, you know, stuff is slow. You get to enjoy, you know, making orders for people. And it's just a great atmosphere. You have, you know, happy little music playing and it's just pretty much, you know, the uh, lo-fi kind of feel, you know. So this is almost on par with what it looks like inside the mobile eateries that you get to eat at in the Empire, the Astro Empire. Most of these eateries are out during the night time because the nightlife is actually quite expansive throughout each planet. There is actually types of people called the Twilights and the Dawns. These individuals who enjoy the night as soon as it begins and as soon as it ends. Oh wow, these are individuals who enjoy the night as soon as it begins and as soon as it ends. They really enjoy the kind of half glowing night that gives the land a surprise in the, in, in the invisible but vibrant glow. You get to see everything around you without the sunlight. It's very nice. We are actually trying to manufacture a planet now that is in a perpetual state of twilight, so that way individuals will be able to enjoy the twilight for as long as they wish. And this might be a fantastic place for Adinsfo to make one of his homes. Remember, Adinsfo has his home on his main battleship. That is pretty much what his home is. And now he is going to be having a home on the tar planet and maybe a home on the capital planet. <clears throat> one ooh. yeah one on the tar planet one on the twilight planet and then one on the astrolic moon so technically uh maybe uh three or four planets four homes but yeah uh, one on the tar planet and then one on the twilight planet and then one on the on the astral moon but yes during these times of the night at both dawn and twilight the eateries make ludicrous business and do exceptionally well and rake in the cash. The night eatery market is actually quite an abundant business and because of the hyper sublight engines and the specialized air penetrating coating on the ships, these eateries are capable of getting to new places exceptionally quick and being able to set themselves up within minutes. Because of the advanced modular designs of these surprise and the advanced eatery ships, they are able to box themselves up into something that looks like a semi-truck, and then as soon as they get to a new place, it only takes a few minutes for the autonomous technology to set itself up for the cooks or a single cook before they can start business. In fact, sometimes an entire building is able to fit inside a semi-truck sized ship and it can set itself up for a couple days in a zone and then move along to a different zone after a few minutes of deconstruction. Then there are semi-permanent establishments which are about four times bigger than a normal semi-truck. These would be called base eateries. And these base eateries are known for being able to be in zones from only a couple months to a couple years before going to a new area. These eateries have special deals with the cities and different zones that they go into and they get to have ultra discounted rates of power and other utilities. But yes, usually the nightlife does not use normal lights. We usually prefer to use colored lights and other various types of illumination to not only give nighttime a magical and otherworldly feel, but it also is to help uh, keep individuals' eyes exercised and protected to keep them from atrophying due to con constant nighttime. It is an extremely fun time for the nighttime individuals, both the twilights and the dawns. You will see expansive nighttime markets and even show even shows and other types of things going on during the nighttime as individuals get to enjoy a whole new different set of people.
The dawns and twilights are in those weird transitional st uh, times between night and day and day and night. They aren't exactly considered deep night individuals, but they are a different phase of individuals that really enjoy the transitional phase of the day. It is almost a spiritual connection with the environment and just the atmosphere. There are actually four sets of individuals. You have the daytime individuals, the deep dark individuals, the dawns, and then the twilights. Each one of these four groups has a different society, different rules that have they have that are unspoken, different morals and ethics on certain areas, and it is almost as if it's four different countries coexisting on one. It is a very unique and surreal experience. For individuals who are not trained or who do not live in the Astral Empire, this can be quite bewildering because you don't know what to expect from people and you might accidentally insult somebody with something that you do and then make somebody else feel happy with the other thing that you do. But for individuals like Adinsfo and Titan and Sufti, these individuals have been around for a very long time and they all prefer the deep dark, the twilight as the dawn parts of the day. This allows them to be around when the bulk of the empire is at rest and allows them to have more peace and ease of getting around when exploring. But yes, there is also, there is almost four different complete societies all living on the same planet and as the same people. It is very interesting because of the unity and the hard-working brotherhood and sisterhood of the Empire. You have a very little to no trouble in between groups of individuals because of everybody working together for the betterment of the Empire and for the betterment of themselves. But you will definitely see completely different meal cuisines between the four groups of people. You will see different kinds of accents or ideas or even languages and dialect differences in between these people. In fact, the dawns and the twilights are known to be akin to each other, but also being very much blatantly different from each other as well. Like I said, these mobile eateries are one of the very few individuals and groups of people that actually can see the trans phase from the daytime to the deep dark back to the daytime once again. So, there are times where these three nighttime groups will actually work together and they will have amazing and culturally rich eateries or even markets where you can go to and you can see a completely different kind of people. It is very much a very beautiful and vibrant market full of beautiful colors and shining lights and glowing eyeballs. It has almost a mystical feel to it. The atmosphere is different. The feeling is different. You just feel like you have been taken to a whole new world. You want to know the really weird part about this? These factions of individuals have actually developed on almost every planet of the Empire, so it's actually pretty darn cool. Adensfo really enjoys the deep dark and has great enjoyment being out through the night. And, due to his body being the only supernaturally bioluminescent and sprouting the seven colors of the Astral Seven, this makes him all the rage for the nighttime individuals. So, whenever he goes to a festival during the nighttime or one of the nighttime markets, everybody flocks to him and watches every move he makes with undying loyalty and extreme observation. Whenever he speaks up, or puts his paw up, the entire area grows completely silent. It is a very surreal experience and can sometimes make the Great Wolf feel uncomfortable because he wants to just exist with his people, but due to him being the powerful warlord that has kept the Empire safe and functional for many generations, this is all they know and they see him as this powerful force of the universe that they should revere. But. They also know when to give him space, and when they do, when they go about their duties or whatever, they do. They always keep their eye on him because they want to be ready for him, for him when he calls or whenever he's about to do something else. 
The eateries that the Great Wolf visits will not accept payment and will demand that they give him food for free. This is their way of showing respect and admiration for the leader because of all that he has done to better the Empire and to better their lives. Like I said, this is a very weird mystical society that is on the realm of Avatar. You know that movie with the weird blue cat people? It is a completely different society than the daytime, so because Edensville has been alive for multiple generations and so prevalent in his people's lives with all the hard work and dedication he shows to the Empire, everybody sees him in these three nighttime groups, similarly to the individuals in Warhammer 40k. They just look at him with awe and wonderment. A very strange and surreal experience indeed for the wolf. But they very much enjoy having him around, and they take him to different areas that they find to be fun and interesting, and they love to show him around. In fact, there are sub-communities on these planets called Dark Out Zones, where these consist solely of societies based around the nighttime. During the daytime, it is like complete and utter desolation and abandonment. You will see nobody around, and everybody is inside their houses or homes, completely hidden away until the last two hours of sunlight. So, whenever the Great Wolf comes to these areas after being led around by the Twilights, they will show him their homes and their communities and societies, and they will greatly enjoy being able to tell him their stories. Adinsfo is greatly pleased with their hospitality, and he really enjoys them being so happy to have him around. It makes him feel like he's finally one with his people, and it warms his heart to see so many people wanting him to come and visit their cute nighttime communities. Next, after about 4 hours or 5 hours of hanging out with the Twilights, the Deep Darks will take their turn and they will show him around as the sky goes black like the abyss speckled with the other planets of the Empire and the surrounding stars. You get to see a weird change in the atmosphere as the Twilights merge back into the Night Society and Night Shifts. So now, the Deep Darks will take him to their own communities and show um, him their societies and homes. All of them have beautiful lanterns of multiple colors, and candles and glow sticks, and whatever emits light, but a gentle and warm natural light, not harsh artificial mites. In fact, these individuals have mastered skills that no other group of people have. It is truly a phenomenal and amazing time for the Great Wolf because he he greatly enjoys the hundreds of different societies that his empire has outside of its normal unity and being a strong workforce and a powerful engine. After spending around 4-5 to five hours with the Deep Darks and seeing their communities and eating with them as well, they, they, then they will as well phase back into the Night Society as the Dons finally take their turn with the Dense Foe and spend their 4-5 to five hours with him as well. Remember, a dense foe very often goes for days on end without sleeping, so uh, it's because of his bodily enhancements and his supernatural uh, properties that allows him to be able to, uh, you know, um, exist on so many different levels. <clears throat> The dawns are built around the dawn of a new day, and the renewal and removing of the nighttime to be slowly taken over by the beautiful blue light of their home stars. You will see their homes having a completely different architecture than the other two nighttime groups. These individuals have specialized solar collection facilities that allows them to stay powered throughout the daytime, and nighttime taking out batteries and replacing them with power cores so that way they can be charged throughout the daytime using the solar energy from the host star. These individuals will often have pictures and hieroglyphs of the sun peeking over the horizon but not being completely full in the sky. These individuals do not like to be out during the daytime, but they do enjoy the early morning and the long shadows of the landscape and the buildings cast of the landscape. When the sun starts to reach around 30 degrees in the sky is when they re uh, recede back into their night society to sleep the day away and to stay hidden from the full sun. The Dons greatly enjoy having their leader there and they give him amazing meals and show him around the societies and communities as well. 
With them, they have a binary type of theme that they go by, where the moons are seen and always depicted first, and then the sun. Second, unlike the twilights, which depict which depict the sun first and then the moon second, and then the deep darks depicting only the moon as their sole companion, and the daytimes depicting only the sun as their sole companion. The dons will often put on a show for about thirty minutes, depicting their society in a beautiful show for the great wolf to observe and to take in. After that thirty minutes of introduction, they will then take him around to their societies and communities, and have him see how they live their lives and what they do and what they call things. You see, unlike Earth, that has different countries, we have different factions of individuals who are up at different times of the day. We have four main factions, and then we have our planets that, that give us our diversity, and those act as different countries. It is really, really cool. It is like multiple societies inside multiple societies inside of a giant society. <clears throat> But yes, the Great Wolf will enjoy around four to five hours with the Dons before they too must recede and stay inside as the sun exceeds thirty degrees in the sky. But they will often give him a special and priceless gift that they have worked tirelessly on as a token of their gratitude and friendship to the Great Wolf and all that he has done to make their lives better and to be the center point of their societies. Then this too is when the when Adinsfo will often stay with a family or a group for the day as they sleep the day past before he moves on to the next portion of the planet or a new planet. This is truly a magical and mystifying experience for the Great Wolf, and he enjoys very much being able to spend a month on a planet, enjoying the nightlife, and a few times during the day as well, being able to see his people and being able to interact with them and exploring his empire, which he usually does not get to do since he is always on high alert. So, by doing this, he is learning so much more about his people. And he overall is greatly pleased with his people, and how much they have been self-sufficient, despite him often having to be on the front lines, fighting war after war after war. The Great Wolf has voiced his pleasure and admiration for his people, and he greatly enjoys telling the Empire that they are doing very well, and that they have been keeping the teachings of the Astral Seven strong and within their hearts, and following the teachings of the Great Creator, and craving a close relationship with him. Adinsfo during this time will often hand out a number of tokens of the Astral Seven, so that way people can have a constant reminder of the Great Creator and His teachings. This will result in individuals being very happy and enjoying the gift that came directly from the leader, the ruler, the emperor, the Great Wolf himself, Adinsfo. Awkwardly so, there is almost a cult-like following. An admiration for Adinsfo, the Great Wolf, by the Twilights and the Dawns, and some Deep Darks. Weird ceremonies are sometimes held, showing off the colors of the Astral Wolf, wears in honor that the Astral Wolf wears in honor of the Astral Seven. Songs, rituals, and even complete societies are based around Adinsfo, and this can sometimes be a little bit troublesome because their focus is supposed to be on the Great Creator and not worshiping Adinsfo. Adinsfo appreciates the homage and love that he gets from his supporters, but he finds this to make him extremely uncomfortable and uneasy, as it gets a very creepy air of a cult forming. He will be making efforts to try to calm the individuals down and to remind them of who they should be keeping their hearts on. He does not mind the support or the love or the homage, but he does start to get the willies when individuals start turning it into a society and almost a cult. Usually, the reasons why these societies started is because he shows himself or appears out of nowhere during the twilight and dawn times of the day, and that's one of the reasons why these societies have started to form over the last few centuries. So you can definitely see why there is such a drastic difference between the two double groups of daytime and the deep dark, and then the twilights and then the dawns. The Dons and the Twilights are known for being more unusually minded individuals. They are known for being almost ethereal when going about their business. They are a lot. There are a lot of quote normal individuals who just go about their way and just have fun, 
but you can definitely sense a strange atmosphere during these time periods. A strange and surreal experience indeed. At Dinsfold, Percy enjoys the atmosphere and the energies that he feels around him when he is with his people, but there are always those few groups who take things off a little bit too far and he has to correct them. Luckily, with these strange followings of a Dinsfold groups, the corrections of them have not exceeded anything more than just, a, than just being a gentle talking to and a reminder where their hearts and souls should be. Usually, that is good enough to help dismantle that strange following before it becomes too much of a problem. And on top of that, usually a few dietary supplements can be administered and that will help them kind of snap out of that weird mysticism phase and help them kind of snap back into reality. After that happens, they are greatly appreciative of the understanding and caring nature of the leader and they apologize usually for what they did. Usually a reminder of the Astral Wolf was a good way to help them snap back to reality and for them to think about what they are doing. Plus, a Dinsfo provides incentives at times for individuals who have trouble with this, so sometimes them trying to self-reintegrate back to a more normal mindset, a Dinsfo will sometimes give them personal tours of his fleet and may even allow them to see what the surface of the astral moon looks like. Their awe and wonderment is usually enough to last them for many years to come. But, there is a large concern that troubles the Great Wolf. He worries about this strange new following that is developing as more rumors and scouting reports have surfaced. Unfortunately, because of this unusual time of peace, people are starting to grow a little bit complacent, and this is causing individuals to turn their hearts and minds away from the Great Creator because the Empire is not in a state of war. So, because of this, they have more time to think about other things, and that is starting to cause individuals to think about other things that can develop into something harmful if not properly handled. Adensfo has never had to deal with this issue before, because the Empire has always been dealing with wars and battles and skirmishes and campaigns and other various high alert things throughout its entire existence and throughout his entire time being in the Empire. But, Following the strange era of peace, there has been a strange atmosphere that seems to emanate from these two groups, the Dawns and the Twilights. These two groups of individuals have never ever caused any issues before, and they have actually been some of the most agreeable and cool people with the Great Wolf, even offering their support and assistance in helping spreading reminders of the Astral Seven to the rest of the Empire. So seeing this strange cult-like following that is seeming to develop from subcategories of these groups is really starting to greatly concern the Grey Wolf. So he is employing a special secret service that he has developed over the last century called the Twilight Guard and the Dawn Guard. These individuals are known for being incredibly loyal and very responsible individuals. They have never been any problem to Adinsfo, and they have helped him take care of multiple issues that have, uh, that have arisen throughout their existence. The Dawn Guard and the Twilight Guard are known for their ultra-secret and covert work in these areas to make sure that there is always, a, that there is always protection and vigilant hand upon his people no matter what. These individuals work 10-hour shifts as they observe and watch society move from daytime to the deep dark. There is sometimes something known as a daytime high guard, which works about 8 hours, which ranges from the first 2 hours of the sun being up and the second 2 hours before it goes back down. Then there are the deep dark guard, and they do the same and are known for being exceptional in their fields, dealing with the dawns and the twilights. And the deep dark guard pretty much are the same thing as the daytime high guard, but uh, they, uh, you know, uh, do the nighttime shift instead. So, all four of these specialized secret operation groups work directly with the Great Wolf, and they do whatever he says, however he says, no matter what anyone else says. They are solely loyal to him, and they will do whatever needs to be done, no matter the cost and no matter the reason or consequences. They are known for being colder individuals and more aloof. They are known for being extremely practical and being nearly completely logical. They work very similar to how Vulcans do, and they actually have specialized dietary supplements that naturally suppress emotions but increase creativity and cognitive skills to help them always be ahead of the game. If you can somehow manage to make one of these individuals laugh, then you will have a very special gift.
These are individuals that are known to not be of any certain group of people. They are known for either being outcasts or for not really having a place in society. So, a Densville gives them a, pra- a place and a purpose. Hopefully, these four groups can all work in tandem and do whatever needs to be done to help quell and stomp out the weird cult followings that seem to be arising out of the dawns and twilights and deep darks. So far, their efforts have been extremely fruitful, and they have done very well in using the very little force needed to help remind individuals that cults are not allowed, and that admiring admiring the Astral Wolf is perfectly fine, but looking to him like a god is a no-no, and is to be strictly prohibited under any circumstances. Adensfo is known for being extremely humble and often giving credit to the Great Creator, so to be getting this much admiration from his people makes him feel very unusual and often makes him want to isolate himself. But he is trying to work up the courage when he can, when he can without pushing himself into a panic attack or a PTSD-induced episode, to go visit his people and to see these societies and, at, inter, and to interact with them. So far, this has gone exceptionally well, with very little trouble and nearly no friction. All the systems that he has set in place, and all the cold hard facts and data that he has gone over throughout the centuries have proven him right, and all the things that he has done, and because of the guidance and the counsel of the Great Creator, the Empire is continuing to flourish and grow and advance itself better than before. This makes the planetary leaders and other various military leaders and political leaders very pleased. And overall, this pleases Adensfo greatly, seeing that the hard work that he and his people have done and have put in is paying off abundantly. Blessings of the Great Creator. Blessings of the Astral Seven. Blessings of the Timeless Astral Empire. Blessings from our great leader and friend, Adensfo the Astral Wolf.